Phillips Museum and we are looking at a piece of furniture from the collection. I have in front of us a table which in the 18th century when it was made was called a tilt top stand for the obvious reason that the top tilts up. This little table was made so that the top would swivel as well as stand up when the table was not in use it was placed against a wall in the standing position so it took up less space. The table shows a lot of lathe turning. The top is turned on a lathe, the standard is turned on a lathe, and the small colonnettes, as they are called, in this box are also turned on a lathe. The rest of the pieces are sawn out of wood and, and shaped uh, to suit. The table has three legs, which makes the table much more stable on an uneven floor than do four legs. These, each of the three legs is sawn out of a piece of wood, shaped, and then slid into the bottom of the pillar through a dovetailed slot. Now these stands belonged in houses of some wealth. Uh, people who had these tables would need them for various uses such as reading or doing whatever work a gentleman might be doing or needlework or sewing, repair of clothes, any work that a woman might be doing uh, and that individual would need to just grab a table, put it near a chair as I have this table, do the work and then put it away. These tables of course are very collectible. The top is actually made of mahogany and the base is made of walnut. We know that 18th century furniture makers didn't mix those woods because mahogany was very expensive, walnut was much less expensive. When we look closely at the wood, we see pretty much the same color and similar grain structure, but the one difference is that mahogany has a particular cell, a visible cell line called parenchyma that does not occur in walnut. So I hope you're persuaded that the top and the base don't belong together, but it certainly is instructive and it tells us a lot about 18th century furniture making. <laughs>